Hey guys, it's Lexi. On my Instagram story, I posted a poll on this week's video concept, and the two options were New York City wardrobe essentials, or I talked to three psychics and this is what they said. Which is what won? It was kind of a close vote. It's kind of what I wanted to film this week anyway, so it works out really well. If you want to vote in the next one that I'm going to post on probably tomorrow or the next day, follow me on Instagram. My handle is at Lexi. I've never had a psychic reading in my life. I've talked to spiritual people, I've had my own personal spiritual experiences, but the idea of paying money to have a professional psychic tell me about my past, present, and future felt stupid to me. However, a friend of mine had been talking to this psychic and recommended it to John, who recommended it to me and a bunch of my other friends. So it seems like there's a group of people in my life right now that are all talking to this woman. So I felt, okay, I'll do it. I'll have of my first psychic reading because it seems like this woman has something interesting to offer. So after having a conversation with her, I decided, let me put it to the test. Let me talk to a couple more, compare what they're saying, see if they're saying the same thing, and maybe I can debunk who's a phony, what is accurate, and what is really, you know, in store for me in my, my present and my near future and my far away future. The first woman I talked to is the recommendation, and her name is Healthy. She's based in California, so our conversation was over FaceTime, which I was a bit hesitant about because I didn't know how strong of a reading that she could get from me if we were talking through the screen. However, I will say, it didn't seem to make much of a difference. I felt like she did get a good read. Before she called, John was like, what are you going to ask her? It's like, personal life stuff, I want to know about my love life, my kids, my family. I don't really care about asking about work. I don't really want to talk about it because I, I have a direction to go with that. I have a feeling of where that's going to take me, whereas my whole personal life and that, I have no idea. So we get on the call and she's like, alright, so I'm going to pull a couple cards and do a reading so I can get a feel for you because we don't know each other. So she pulls the cards and she looks down and she's like, <gasps> Oh my god, your career, your your work is flourishing. You have some really exciting things that I want to tell you about. And so I'm like, what the fuck? That's the one thing I didn't want to talk about. But I'm just keeping a very stoic face. I was sitting right here for the FaceTime, so just plain white wall, minimal makeup, like wearing a black shirt, so there was no identifying factors about the type of person I could be. Also, my cell phone's area code is in Virginia, so she would have no way of knowing that I lived in New York. She didn't know my last name, so she couldn't look me up or anything. So she was really having nothing to pull from other than her own abilities, which is I was trying to create as much of a control as possible. Coming at this from a very analytical perspective instead of just having this sort of fun, entertaining experience. I don't know, that's just me. I can't help it. Anyway, so she's looking at my career. You work with cameras. I see you in front of them. I also see you behind them, but you're definitely in front of them. I'm like, okay, good guys, healthy. Once again, I'm not saying anything. She's like, clothes, modeling, accessories. Do you model? And I was like, no, I don't. But like, I don't know, in the back of my head I was thinking, okay, maybe Instagram? She just like can't, I don't know, getting confused. And she's like, well, if you don't model, you're definitely going to be modeling. In the new year, I see you modeling clothes, more stuff on camera, and you're going to hire employees, and you're going to, I see handbags, I see handbags. Do you, do you like handbags? I'm seeing a lot of them. Oh, and also when she's saying this, she's, her like eyes are rolling back in her head. She's like, <laughs> I'm not trying to make fun of her, sorry. I just like don't even know how to do it. Her eyes are like, She's blinking, but they're going farther. I don't even know how to explain it. She's kind of looking in my direction, but kind of not. And I do love handbags. I mean, there's a lot of women on this planet who love handbags, but I'm one of them. It's like, yeah, I see you designing a handbag collection, which is interesting because I just did an article with Creator Lab and they were asking about like projects that I could see myself doing in the future. I would love to do a collaboration with um, a brand designing a pattern um, and I envisioned it, purses in it so that was interesting but it, like Lexi X Prada because I'm studying graphic design so designing a pattern of my own and then having like a Lexi X I don't know Louis Vuitton I probably wouldn't do Louis Vuitton I would not do Louis Vuitton if Louis Vuitton approached me I'd probably be like okay so like I see you with a handbag collection I don't see you with a nine to five you're definitely gonna hire employees I can't see you ever working for someone Mind you, I'm not saying anything. I haven't said a thing. Also, the whole camera thing, it, it's just, that was surprising, you know? So it was off to a kind of good start where, you know, there's potential legitimacy in her abilities. Who knows? This is interesting. This is about 15 minutes through the session, which the session was 30 minutes, and I paid $80 for it, which I think is uh, c quite standard. 
I believe. So we had about half the time left, and in my head I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe we spent half the time talking about this thing that I didn't even want to talk about. Not to say it wasn't interesting, but it's just ironic that the only thing I didn't want to talk about was everything that the cards were telling her. And she said, so what else do you want to know? I was like, let's talk about my love life. Let's, you know, see what's in store for that. She starts looking, does the blinking thing again. She was like, there's some blocks that you have to get through first. You have some traumas, specifically ones at 4 and 14. So I'm like going through my list of traumas that I've dealt with in my life. And I'm like, okay, like what happened when I was 4 and 14? A month and a half before I turned 14. A really, really, really borderline the most important role model I ever had in my life passed away. Slight pull, but not uh, super out of left field. And then when I was 4, thinking I'm like okay my mom was really sick growing up but did anything happen when I was four I don't think so nothing is coming to mind regardless even though it wasn't true to have someone say that to you it's like what blocks do I have to get what okay so these unidentified traumas that I allegedly had when I was born 14 are keeping me from having a strong relationship she was like you're gonna date people in the next year but nothing Nothing serious, at least for a couple more years. She said, and then you're going to find someone good, and you're going to have kids with him. And uh, she said, I, I see two. I could see more, but I only see two right now. It was interesting hearing her dialogue uh, because I was trying to envision how she was seeing it as she was explaining it to me. Oh, yeah, career booming. Money will not be an issue. She made that very clear. I didn't even ask about it. She was like, oh money is not going to be an issue for you. I was like, okay, sweet. She was like, you're a really powerful person. You have a big life ahead of you. Um, so get ready for it. And then she asked if I had any other questions. And I was like, really just anything about my personal life, less about my career life. I was like, do you have anything to say about like my parents or uh, my family? And she really couldn't see anything. She was like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Which I appreciated. It made me trust her ability that much more that she was honest about saying like, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that was the first reading. So that was my baseline experience, what I had everything to compare to. And then on Wednesday, I saw my second psychic and I had my second reading. This was 20 minutes, but she went over, so I'm going to say it was about 30 minutes. And it was $34, so it was less than half the price. Um, and this woman had been working for 25 years as a clairvoyant. Right off the bat, she asked me for my birthday which I thought was a red flag, and so I spoke up. Like I said, I've been trying to be quite plain-faced during all of these experiences. At least that was my goal, just to try to avoid feeding um, a particular statement. Anyway, so when she said, what's your birthday? I was like, oh no, like, do I have to tell you? Just because I don't want an astrological reading. She's like, oh no, 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 I'm not gonna tell you about your zodiac whatsoever, but I do need to know the day of the month that you were born. So I said 15. And she pulls the cards and she's like, mm, that makes sense. This means that you're a leader and you know what you want to do, but you have this other side of your personality that is flying everywhere. It does whatever it wants, it overindulges, and it would float away if you didn't have the one. Um, the one puts you right back in check before you go too far and it leads you because this one has big goals and it's been following its big goals for a long time and it's going to continue to do that but it does have to keep this in check i identify with that statement very strongly i will admit and then she goes over cards and she said are you in a relationship right now and i said no and she's like okay well come new year one's gonna hit you in the face so get ready also healthy said that 2020 is gonna be a really big year for me she says it's gonna be a really big year for a lot of people something in the gonna be big for us I already feel like it's gonna be big I even going into 2019 I was like 2019 is not gonna be a big year for me nothing crazy is gonna happen and personally nothing crazy happened for me I had a feeling 2020 big year back to my second reading okay relationship was gonna hit me in the face he's already looking for me may even already be interacting with me but hasn't exactly made figured out how to make his move okay <laughs> cool <laughs> Where are they at, bro? I'm a go-getter. I have a big fruitful career ahead of myself. Second time I've heard that. So really excited for this big career I have coming. Uh, she said, oh, this is interesting. She was like, you come across as sweet. And a lot of the time, if not most of the time, you're acting sweet. But you need to hone in on, on the leader that is only exemplified in more formal situations. And you should use it more in your personal life. Because you can make decisions but you come across as flighty and indecisive, 
because you want to like include others which I agree with <laughs> a lot of these things a lot of us could agree with maybe you'll have to let me know in the comments especially once I get to the third reading that I haven't told you about yet if psychic readers have told you this as well because oh my god I really just feel like there's a list of things they tell us all but I I don't know you'll have to confirm it for me also I want someone else to make this video I want many people to make this video but I'll get to that later oh Okay, this was this was something that was really specific. She was looking at this one card and she said, okay, so over the summer, you had to shift a relationship with someone. They were calling you too much. You needed to cut ties with them. You need to say, okay, you can't just be talking to me all the time. We can't just talk three or four times a week because we're not gonna have anything to talk about. We need to cut it down. I'll talk to you when I wanna talk to you. Over the summer, I literally had to cut communication with someone in my life because they were calling me, notifying me at an overbearingly frequent amount. So that was strange. I'm really trying to keep this skeptic perspective, but sometimes things get dropped in your, in your lap that you're like, okay, I can entertain that idea. What else did she say? I give too much of my time away to people. I, I can't give more than I receive and I need to even out the giving to receiving level. But I do feel like people give to me and I give to people. I don't know if I agree with that. I think my giving to getting ratio is quite even because I give a lot but I also ask for a lot, you know? Okay, so she got to Envy and this is where I was like, come on, like, are you kidding? She got to the Envy card and she said, so I don't think this means that you're envious of anyone. I don't think you are envious of anyone. I think people are really envious of you. And to be honest, I don't think you realize it whatsoever. I also think people are hostile towards you and you don't realize it whatsoever. I think people look at you and they judge you because they think that you have your life together and they don't know why they don't have their life together. People look at you and they wonder why they don't look like you and they think people see you and and they they want to have that. They want to be and have what you have and you're completely unaware to all of it. I was like, oh, you really? Like you pulled the envy card and like that's what you're saying? That's so like overtly nice no you don't envy anyone people envy you like they want to be you they want to know why they're not you like okay way to boost my ego bitch but thank you sure and then we also got to a part that was kind of interesting that i want to know that she so this part of my personality that like floats off and can one of the aspects of it is that it overindulges which i certainly do she said sweets you have too many and you can't be having this many fact literally didn't have dinner last night I had chocolate covered almonds and called it dinner you have to lower your sugar intake it's not good for you specifically I'm sorry I don't have b-roll for this video I like when there is separation between my voice dialogue and visuals but I just wasn't filming during these occurrences also I don't even know if they would really add to the video but I'm sorry that it's just a lot of you looking at my face and me talking this could certainly just be a podcast so that was my second reading and the third one get ready there's many elements in this reading that are a lot wild ride okay this happened yesterday i went to another shop in the city and i picked someone that i wanted to talk to but then i got impatient and there was another reader that was available now instead of having to wait a half hour i could have waited a half hour i don't know if it would have been different but something in my head tells me it would have been i had hesitations about this woman even from looking at her picture but i went in she had a really long resume she's been working as a psychic professionally for 35 years something like that something even longer i get in there she looks the stereotypical part i was almost angry when i got in there i was like oh i do not like her i don't like her at all <laughs> my camera died okay a slight shift relocation i don't know okay this third reading so i sit down and i'm not a fan of her so she asked me my name and i say alexandra and she's like oh a big responsibility to live up to I was like yeah I go by Lexi she starts pulling cards and unlike I, I can't tell how the first woman pulled cards because we were on FaceTime and I couldn't see them I only saw her face but the second reading I had the cards were all out on the table like picked and we looked at them this woman was just like touching them flipping them putting piles of them like deciding whether or not she wanted to put that one down if it was applicable to what she was saying i don't know if that's a technique i don't know enough i'm, I'm an outsider looking in on this industry at the beginning i was just almost distracted by my regretful decision to speak with her because i just had a feeling that i was gonna let my emotions get in the way of our discussion so she's pulling these cards and she's like okay so 
you've had some problems in your past but you're getting through them like a cool bitch same as everybody and then she says you've been really sad recently and she looks at me she's like it's okay what are you supposed to say when you've been happy recently and someone's like you've been sad i can tell but it's okay. I'm looking at my notebook over there where I have entry that I put into my journal. I'm like, I've been so happy recently. Whatever. And then she said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm channeling. I'm channeling and she starts blinking uncontrollably and she's kind of looking at me, but she's not actually looking. Like, she's looking at me, but she's not looking at me. She's looking at whatever she's seeing. And she's like, yes, yes, who's in here? Okay, the mother, Mother Mary. I can't remember if it's Mother Maiden or Mother Mary, I'm sorry. Okay, she's here. And this is where it gets absurd. Okay, so whenever this Mother Maiden Mary figure comes in, I felt like I was going to pass out. <laughs> I felt like I was going to pass out. This is strange, and I could have just been over-medicated. I've had a cold this week, so I might sound congested right now. So I've been taking a ton of different like medications like Dayquil, uh, Tylenol, AM, stuff like that. You know, maybe they can, just being sick or medication can make you feel lightheaded, but it was very strange timing, I will say that. And she said, she's here, she's looking at you, and she wants to be in your life. You need a female figure. You have not had a strong female figure in your life. She's here to protect you, and she's here to guide you, and she's here as someone that you can talk to. And all of a sudden, I feel like I'm going to cry. I'm not sad. I, I mean, like, physically, it feels like tears are going to fall out of my eyes. No. What is happening? Am I going to pass out right now? Am I okay? 70% of me is like, okay, weird coincidence. You were just in a mood. But then 30 or less percent of me is like, you know, maybe it was the mother maiden that was making all these crazy things. Like the spiritual energy around me was overwhelming. I don't know. Take it as you will. I take it as you will. So I'm looking at her. I need to get out of here. I'm not okay. Should I verbalize this to her? I didn't. I was like, just sit through it. It's only 30 minutes. It's fine. Which I paid $80 for this 30 minute session as well. So it was the same as the first woman. And she starts pulling more cards and she said, do you have a sister? And I was like, no. And she's like, do you have a sister like figure? You know, like, do you have a strong female friend in your life? I was like, yeah, I have a lot of strong female friends. She's like, yeah, but one that feels like a sister. Like I have a few. And she's like, Okay, well then maybe you're gonna have a sisterly figure that enters your life very soon. And I was like, okay, bullshit, but like, whatever. And she's pulling more cards and she said, mmm, big career ahead of you. Big career. All right, we're three for three. Big career ahead of me. Do you have any questions that you want to ask me? Classic. I'm like, let's talk about my love life. She said, are you in school right now? Um, I said, yes. She's like, yeah, you're too mature for the boys there. They're not your type. You're too good for them. It's like, okay, really umbrella statement, woman. I don't know if I'm too good for all the boys in my school, but okay, sure. She said, yeah, I'm not going to find one there, but I will find one through my work. And that is going to be where I meet the man that I end up with, who I will have a very fair relationship with, with a lot of communication, which are two very important things that I value. So that's great. I'm going to meet him through my work. And then she says things like, do you want to have kids? I was like, yes. She's like, then you're going to have kids. I'm like, is this real? Why am I paying for this? The passing out part was just OD. She said, money's not going to be a problem for you. I'm like, all right, we're two for three on that. Then she brings up my stomach. She's like, let's talk about your stomach. Little weird um, because my stomach is A, the biggest insecurity that I have. And B, well, we'll get to that in a second. You feel things in your stomach physically and emotionally. Um, you get knots in your stomach. And I was like, yeah, but doesn't everyone? And I think that was the first time that I spoke out because I just was getting a little bothered. I'm like, this is such a waste of my time. You're such a phony. It's like, no, some people feel it in their shoulders. Some people feel it in their head and you feel it in your stomach, which I do, but a lot of us do, good guess. And then she said, and you need to cut out the sugar. You have too much sugar and you can't have it. You really can't, you have to cut out the sugar. So we're two for three on that one. I didn't ask the first woman about my health. It honestly didn't even occur to me because relatively speaking, I am healthy and I don't have like gut issues. It's just, I have a lot of fat in my stomach. And this is something that not just the psychics are telling me, my doctor tells me too, I need to lower my carb intake. I consume too many carbs that my for my body to handle. PCOS things, whatever, whatever, okay? It's just really hard to not eat carbs. But yeah, two, two for two is saying my stomach, um, maybe that's a video concept. I eat a normal, healthy, nutritious diet for a week. I'm exaggerating a bit. Like, my diet is not off the rails. It's just, like, not as good as it could be. And then, so classic. She said this at the beginning, and then she said it again in the middle and the end, that I have psychic abilities. 
I myself could be a psychic and I'm magical. She said I'm magical a lot throughout this thing. I'm like, you're so full of it. Uh, because doesn't everyone get told that? I swear, all of my friends, unless I'm just randomly friends with all of the psychics, um, when they have readings, they get told that they have really strong intuitions and psychic abilities, which honestly, maybe we all have it, but like we don't, you know, we don't. <sighs> it's so hard to talk about the unknown because you want to be so factual about it. You're like, it's just not true, but it's like realistically, do I know? No. Study it. She also told me I need to study men and I didn't really have her elaborate on that. I was a little confused. Didn't really know what she meant. I'm going to have a really blessed life. She's like, you've been lucky in this life. Yeah, you, you're, you're going to have it really good. I'm excited for, for the future for you. You have a, a big life ahead of you. And then she finished off discussing my beauty and and telling me how it's a power that I don't utilize and I need to it's something I need to like hone in and use it for my benefit it's something strange something strange and I forget what else she said about it I kind of was like ready to go by this point my overall concluding thoughts on this particular psychic reading trio experience I really feel like out of the three of them the first woman that I talked to had the highest probability of potentially actually talking to spirit. Something about her felt honest. The second woman felt really intuitive. She felt really observant. Um, but ultimately I felt like I just paid $35 for a really good pep talk. She left me feeling fantastic about myself. I, I left going home feeling fantastic. I was in a really good mood afterward. And then the third woman was a total phony. A couple good guesses, a couple weird coincidences. Very strange that I felt like I was gonna pass out and cry during it. That's a little, haven't quite figured that part out, but don't really believe her whatsoever. Take this whole experience with a grain of salt. I would love to hear if they're telling you these things too. I know that I've only talked to three of the hundreds of thousands of psychics that are out here making a living, but this is such an interesting sector of industry because I feel like you encounter psychics like my friend this is insane. I can't believe I didn't tell the story at the beginning. A, a friend of mine, walking in Los Angeles, this woman comes up to her. Mind you, my friend has this strange feeling that something negative follows her. Really strange, just sort of, sort of weird intuitive feeling that she has. A woman in Los Angeles comes up to her and says, I don't mean to scare you, but there's a demon that's following you and you need to get rid of it. Startling, very strange. The story gets weirder. She's in New York. Someone comes up to her, says, I do not mean to scare you, but you have a demon that's following you. There has to be some truth. There has to be access that some people have to things that we can't, most of us can't see, and I don't have doubts in that. However, there are a ton of phonies out there on the market. Can someone else make this video, please? Can someone else go talk to a bunch of psychics and let's compare what they're saying to you? I didn't get that much juicy information on like specifics that are gonna happen to me. The only things that we can, I mean like me developing my own handbag is like my choice, but we'll have to see if a man comes into my life in the new year that just hits me by surprise, that tells me that he's already been looking for me. That was a bit of a pattern maybe in 2015 YouTube where people would see a psychic, tell their YouTube channel what the psychic told them and then make a follow up video in a year confirming or denying what the psychic had told them. So I can't make that video, at least I don't think. I don't think I have enough to work with. If you do have a video concept for next week, I would love to hear it because I'm really a bit stuck right now. I'll come up with something, but as of the past like month or so, I've had ideas ready to go. And for some reason, I don't have an idea for next week and it's freaking me out mildly. In the meantime, follow me on Instagram and Twitter and I will see you guys next week. I'm excited to read the comments on this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Love you, goodbye.